today I'm gonna to try the rose quartz with just the products that I have. Okay, I've got a lot of product on here. It's mostly covered, which is good because I'm gonna put white and a whole bunch of different colors on. So I'm just gonna buff this up and prepare it for the product. You might be able to see a little sparkle on there, but that's okay, we're gonna cover it right up. It's great for designs like this to leave a little thin layer on, especially when you're putting different colors on. Okay, let's form it up. Okay, so I'm gonna do this with acrylic. But I've never really done this design too much. Let me get some monomer, I got a little bit of monomer, I just need to add a bit more. Now this design, if you ever get a look at a rose quartz, I have several of them around the house. They're very mottled, it's not blended. Some parts are faded, so you kind of have to throw it on there. <laughs> that sounds kind of crazy because usually I'm very careful with my placement. But this design, it's very different. There's really no rhyme or reason other than that it's a bunch of colors threading together. You can do this in all sorts of different shades. So I'm gonna do this in that kind of peachy, pinkyish tone. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little of my foundation pink. I'm not actually putting Prep and Prime on there because I've, I've really got this layer here right to the cuticle. So I'm just gonna lay in this foundation pink. Just make sure I get it right near the cuticle. Now with this, you could leave that blob there like this. You don't, I'm gonna make it smooth near the cuticle, of course, but as far as the rest of the nail, you could just leave it there because this design doesn't mind that. Now I do find a little trick that I did learn when I did the other four. Let it dry a little bit in between each blob of product you put on there when you're working with acrylic. Because if you don't, when, you, when I go to put some white on or a different color, it'll blend too much. And with this design, I find it needs a little sharp edge. It fades a lot, but there's a lot of sharp edges in this design as well. So I'm going to let that sit for just a minute and let it cure a little bit. Okay, I'm going to get a little bead of white, but I'm going to work with it a little bit drier. Again, you kind of want that kind of <clears throat> kind of look to it, and you can get that with a bit of a dry brush. And you can even use that trick of draining the extra liquid on the paper towel if you want to get rid of some of it. Okay, so I'm going to plop that in there and I'm going to thread it all the way up in here and then I'm going to just like pull it over like that a little. And then I'm going to fade this part out. I think I will bring that kind of white over in there a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave that. You know what? It, it does seem to like lines, but I'm gonna bring that up. I don't really want a line across there. Okay. Then I'm gonna bring my lighter pink. I call it a uh, pink tint. And it's almost like a clear, because I do want it, this to kind of see through it. I'm just gonna place it right in there. And I'm going to bring this down the side. It's just sort of different opacities and transparencies with white kind of thread through. I'm going to bring in my, I'm going to bring in this peach color too. I call it fold in the cheese. It's a very pretty peach. And I'm just going to thread it in like this. gonna let that dry a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna take a little bit of, with a really dry brush, really dry brush, I'm gonna take a little bit more white acrylic. And I'm gonna place that down in there. There's also, I've noticed, different variations of white intensity. I even would take quite a dry brush 
and go like this and just kind of pop it in there. That works with this design as well. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in some foundation and I'm going to double dip it <laughs> with a little bit of white just on the end. I don't know if I'm gonna show, I'm gonna do that again so I can show you. I go in and get a little bit of foundation pink and then I take it over to the white and then dip just the edge of it in the white. See that? I've got two colors on the one bead and then I'm gonna place it in there. You can see it's a bit drier. I'm just gonna let it absorb into itself for a second. Then I'm gonna just kinda place it down. Okay, so I'm not, I, I don't think I tried this one before. I think I'm going to try the translucent pink bead and then just double dip it with the peachy color. See what that looks like. Just looks like a mess, doesn't it? I think now I'm going to take the pure peachy tone and put it on the free edge just to make sure I do get the shape of my nail in here, which is kind of a long almond. But I didn't really want to cover up that white that I've got down there. Okay, so I think I'm gonna take some dry white I'm going to release some of that on the paper towel because I think I want to go a bit drier. And I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to try that when I mentioned before how I'll get just a dry brush and kind of put some white in there. Just going to put another bead of peach kind of this light pinky coral over here. I think I'm gonna put a blob of peach up in here. Okay, and then I think I'm going to put a bit more, I'm going to reinforce that white. Now just when you think you've created a mess, you want to clear cap it to hold the design in there. You want to just make sure you got the shape because at this point we really didn't structure it too much. This is a design that's, as you can see, you're just sort of winging it as you go. When you keep doing it, you'll realize what you like and what you don't like. Okay, I'm going to try a drier brush and go back in and just make it some whiter highlights right in there. Okay, now I'm going to let it dry or cure completely because I want to put some clear cap on there. And sometimes if the design is a little bit wet and you, the powder if the liquid, if it's still a bit of a wet bead, you don't want to pull it when you put your new coating of acrylic cap on top. So I just want to let that cure a little bit more and then I'm going to put a big clear cap on top. Okay, so now it's all dry or hardened or cured. I'm going to put a big blob of clear on it and encapsulate the design. I can do this in one blob or three blobs or whatever how many blobs you want. Doesn't have to be done in one. But I do want to encase it because I want to keep what I have there and I don't want to file it away. I'll do this with many designs because I really don't want to file what I've created away, especially when I'm placing any type of inlay. I will make sure 
that I clear cap it so I don't file those designs away when I make a shape. You want most of your strength and structure to be in that clear cap. That makes for a very nice strong nail. Okay, we're just gonna let that cure and now we're gonna file it. Do you know when you're starting to file, there's no real rules of where you're to start. You can start where you want. I'm just gonna pinch this. It's nice and cured now and get rid of that form. Okay, so you can just start filing the bulk, which is what I'm gonna do today. And that's why I was mentioning it because sometimes I'll start with the filing, but today I just feel like starting with the bulk. <laughs> There's lots of suggestions out there and you can take those suggestions and we all have our own little ways that we do it, but there really is no rule. You can start by filing the bulk, you can start by shaping, whatever you want. So I'm gonna start by just filing the bulk cause it's, I don't know, it's bugging me and I wanna get it down. <laughs> I guess that's because maybe I'm more impatient. I want to see that design come up. So I'm just filing all this bulky stuff because it is pretty bulky in some spots. And then I'll file the, the real bulky part of the sides with my e-file. I do not shape with an e-file. I just file away bulk. And then the free edge, I'm just sort of getting a roundabout shape. You just wanna be careful you don't file too much when you're coming up from underneath with the e-file, because if you file too high, then your nail's gonna be lifting too high, so don't, you don't wanna do that. Okay, so now I'm gonna just, when I file, I do go back and forth, definitely. That's what I attack the nail first, and I just go back and I don't care what part is high, what part is too low, I will just go back and forth in the whole nail. And what I'm learning from that is my e-file is hitting all the points that are high and it's leveling out to all the low points. And eventually when I keep doing this back and forth, I'm gonna end up with a very, very round, beautiful shaped nail. Now, very rarely I'll, I'll look at it like this and if I feel it's really heavy on the one side, I will rarely do this move. Only if I feel like it's really bulky on the one side or if I'm doing a removal. But generally, I go back and forth to take away all of the bulk, just to keep that nail very round and very nicely shaped, very even. When I go around the cuticle though, I don't go back and forth. I don't go ch -ch 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 there. I go like this, I feather around. If I backtrack, I'll go this way and then I'll go this way, but I'll go one way around the cuticle, but I will go back and forth quite close to the cuticle. Okay, so I filed away a pretty good amount of the bulk and I pretty much got my shape happening. So now I'm gonna take my coarse file and I am gonna start getting a roundabout shape of what I want. Now this is going to be a long almond, sort of my signature shape. It's sort of a stiletto combined with an almond. Some call it stalamond. It's a very cool shape. So now I'm sort of determining the length and where I want it to be as far as fine tuning the shape. Now I will go underneath at this point too. I'm going to look at it this way. Mm, yeah. And now I'm just sort of fine tuning that shape. And when you do fine tune it, you might see it's a little bit thick and bulky in some spots. Then you can go over it again to make sure it's nice and even. And that's looking like my almond shape. And then I will find a light source. <laughs> so I'll go to one of my lights here and I will sort of put it there and take a look at the silhouette. Draw a line down the center in your mind's eye and then take a look and you can see either side. How even is it? That's really, really important. Okay, then I'll get my medium file and I'll go around that shaping of the edge to make it a little bit smoother. And then when I'm really happy with that, I'll bring my fine file in and just make sure that's nice and smooth. You want it to be really smooth to the touch, like to the finger touch. You don't want any rough edges, so I can, you just go like this and it's nice and smooth. Okay, so I'll go over the top and I'll give the whole once over with an arbor band. Okay. 
And no matter what design I'm doing, I always finish with an arbor band pass. I'll just pass over the entire nail and give it a nice arbor band finish. I do this in every single set. When I don't do it, I regret it. It's just not as fine-tuned and not as smooth. If you're working with Chrome, I highly recommend doing this. So I'm finished shaping. I'm just going to get rid of all this dust. Look at this crazy nail. Okay, so there's lots of different types of rose quartz out there. I just go by this thing that I have and it looks very similar to the what I have. It's got these little patches of white and these little pops of peach and these kind of translucent areas which I have. So everybody will have a different version. Of course, this is random. We've just thrown the product in there. So it's going to be very different. No two nails will really look the same. So I'm just going to top coat it. Now you can top coat this with clear or you can matte top coat this. We top coat it with clear shiny polish because we do like our nails shiny, but an actual quartz is quite matted too. So that'll look really cool too. And I did do the other four. So let's check out the photos. All the products I've used in the video today are actually mine, available at nailcareer.com. And thank you to everyone who's been supporting me. I'll catch you guys in the next video.